this episode of Sound Builders, we take a trip to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to meet Eric Singer. We're here to explore his involvement with Lima, a pioneering group in the creation of musical robots, and chat about some of his inspirations and the development of his work over the years. Eric is also going to show us around his workshop so that we can take a look at the technical workings of these objects, as well as the construction and programming that goes into these fascinating machines. Hey. Uh, we're heading down to my basement, uh, also known as Lemur's Shop. One of the things that artists are great at are taking available technologies that are coming out of other fields and repurposing them for art. I, I kind of just look around me and, and get inspired by objects and, and think, how can I turn this object into a musical instrument? So, you know, I've always been a musician and then I went to undergrad for engineering, but pretty quickly discovered the music synthesis department. This is me getting my diploma from one of my least favorite artists. And Were you pissed off that you got it from Phil Collins? Yeah, I was irritated. <laughs> and along the way I met uh, a guy named Richard Boulanger, who's a professor there, and I became his protege and discovered this whole world of what we call alternative musical instruments or alternative controllers. Basically electronic musical instruments that don't look like your standard ones. So I started building these strange different kinds of instruments. Then at some point I co-founded another art group called the Madagascar Institute with two other guys, uh, Chris Hackett and Ryan O'Connor. So the Madagascar Institute is a collective or a combine of guerrilla, street artists, machine artists, pyromaniacs, geeks, and other misfits. The mission is basically to kind of shake up the traditional ideas of art. The group has gone on to do things like make jet engines and put those on carnival rides. In about 2000, I started talking up the idea among friends and colleagues of starting a group to make robotic musical instruments. I was able to interest a number of other people in that idea, and fortunately was able to interest some robotics people. I wanted to get into the kind of weirder, more interesting things like things that can capture gestures, things like gloves, so you can capture your hand motions. <laughs> The sonic banana, which you know, you, it captures this bending and contorting of a rubber tube. And then really just kind of looking around and figuring out what I could turn into a musical instrument. You know, like a slinky or a ball of slime or something like that. The weirder the better just because it's, it's unexpected to people. It's, it's kind of more interesting to explore you know, the space of what can be a new way of making music. Uh, I decided to call the group lemur because lemurs are indigenous to Madagascar. And then I figured out what lemur stood for and I decided that it stood for League of Electronic Musical Urban Robots. And so at that point we sort of knew we needed our own shop. So one floor was the basement where we put the shop. The main floor uh, we used as uh, a studio and performance space and a gallery space so we could do all the showing of instruments. and then. Uh, we had a couple of rooms in the back that we used for classrooms, taught workshops from there. If you want to do anything in metal, you kind of need everything. So you need a grinder, you need a sander, you need a drill press, you need a mill, you need a lathe. What kind of background did you have in, in metal working before you started building the instruments? Uh, absolutely none. You know, you learn by doing, really. Sniffing around other people's shops and getting lessons here and there from other people. That's pretty much how I came to figure out how you do these things. All right, you want to get me uh, dialing that? My vision for the group has always been to be able to move in a lot of different worlds. Uh, on the performance side, we've worked with Pat Metheny, who's a jazz guitarist. They might be giants, pop musicians, electronic music artists like Mort Subotnik and George Lewis. <laughs> The 
kind of music doesn't matter. In fact, I want to get as many different kinds of music into the mix as possible. And over the years, we've evolved an installation called Lemurtron. And that incorporates visuals, motion tracking of, of people moving through the space, and of course, a couple dozen robots. You know, one of the best runs that we had of that it was at the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. We installed about 20 robots, some hanging from the ceiling. In the center of the room, we have a video projection. It comes down from a projector in the ceiling. Looking at that projection, we have a camera. So now the computer can project whatever it wants, and it can see people moving through the space. So you can do things like project a whole bunch of billiard balls on the floor. And as people move through and kick the balls, the balls, the computer makes the balls roll around. Every time the balls collide, we set off a pair of robots. So each ball corresponds to a robot, and it's kind of like this cacophony of collisions that you have control over. Okay, ready, set, go. You put it all together, it becomes this magical world. The guitar bot, like all of the instruments, gets connected to a computer, and it talks using this standard language called MIDI. It's a way that music programs talk to computerized instruments. Microprocessors on each string will determine whether the note is for them, and then they'll start the mechanical actions. I, I played sax all my life, uh, but I still was like, you know, guitar is such a great instrument. Picked up a guitar and started playing along to Ramon's songs, but uh, I sucked. And, and I thought it would be good to have a, a guitar that could play better than me. Ready? Mm -hmm. You'll see that it neither looks like a guitar nor a robot, which is a little confusing to people. But once they see it and hear it play, then it becomes obvious that it's this guitar-based automated instrument. Soon robots will take over and rule the world, and this is my way of getting on their good side first. Okay, don't, you know, don't kill him, he's in the band. <laughs>